Good morning, church. Welcome. What a privilege it is to gather again as God's people in this place to celebrate His love for us, to encourage each other to be encouraged, to pray, and to sing. That's what we're going to do now. Please stand and sing with us. Let's sing together.
And now we're going to move on to only a holy God. Where are we in a squat? <laughs> Stupid instruments to get out of tune. Whereas this one never does. <laughs> it just breaks down and stops. <laughs>
Please have a seat everyone and welcome again to RPAC. My name is Jared, I'm the senior pastor here and it really is a, a wonderful privilege to gather as a church for this new series. We are looking at uh, jumping back into the Gospel of John, John chapters 10 to 15 as we're heading into Easter. I'm going to pray for us, please pray uh, with me and then we're going to stand and say the Apostles Creed, Creed together. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege and the blessing that every new day brings. We thank you that we can sing to you our holy and dependable God. Hear our prayers today. Open our hearts and our minds in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please stand with me and we will say the Apostles' Creed together that will be on the screen. What do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended to the dead. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please have a seat. I'm going to invite up, and the kids up. I can't see any here. I'm going to go rally some from the hall, Kiralee. Okay, Can you all right. Go ahead. All right. Do we have any kids in the house? I don't find some. Where are these kids? <laughs> so we're going to need some big, bigger bed kids. When the kids come, we're going to need some adult help with this today. Okay? So you're going to have to be nice and well healthy. Have we got some kids? Yes. They're coming. <laughs> Jerry, biggest kid. <laughs> Alright, so we need some big, big noises from our kids today. Are you ready for this, guys? So I need to hear these the best, the loudest, to see what sound do you think these animals make. Are you ready? And if you've got an action, you can do that too. And the big kids here are going to see. Alright, what sound does this one make? Nice, good. I think that. You sure it's not a. Alright, okay. I think next one could be. What sound does this one make? Yeah. Although sometimes they do think they're. They think they might be. Okay, what sound does this one make? Nice. Who's the most famous one of those? Doris. Oh, oh, what sound does this one make? You sure? You sure it's not a... No? Alright, Moo. How about our next one? What sound does this one make? Mint sauce, delicious. Okay. Now our next one, our next one's a bit trickier. What sound? Does the guy in the middle make? What does he say? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what sound does he make? Does he does he say? Does he go moo? He's a fancy cow that one moo. He's from Noosa and he says moo. Okay. What would he say? <laughs> Would he say, come on sheep? Yeah. Do you think sometimes he might go, move it sheep, come on, let's go. Okay. Could he call the sheep by name? Would they like to hear his voice? Yes. They would because he's a shepherd and a shepherd's job is to look after sheep. A shepherd stands in the path of danger. So if there ever is a lion, or if there is a nasty bear, 
or a wolf, or even a very cheeky cow, the shepherd will get in the path of danger and protect his sheep. And the sheep like to hear his voice. And we have a little video that shows what happens. is not our friend today but that's okay in this video what happened there were some sheep and they were all hanging around they were having a few snacks they were eating the lovely green grass and they could hear the shepherd calling them and they were happy and they were safe now the thing about sheep sometimes not very clever and sometimes they're not looking around at what's happening and one day there was a robber who was sneaking into the sheep pen, ready to nab himself a few sheep and take them home. And he was gonna steal them. Maybe he was even gonna cook them up for his dinner. He did not have a good intention. He was looking for trouble. And so he tried to pretend he was the shepherd. He even tried his voice and he said, come on sheep, but the sheep, they listened and they understood that it wasn't the good shepherd's voice. So what do you think the sheep did? What do you think they did? Oh, I wish sheep would attack. That would be funny, but they don't really. Sheep are very brave, so they did something else. They run, they ran away. They ran away as fast as they could, looking for their good shepherd. And the good shepherd came. And he shoot off that bad guy and then he called his sheep and he said come and the sheep all breathed a sigh of relief and they went with the good shepherd now the bible sometimes calls jesus the good shepherd and when jesus is the good shepherd who do you think the sheep would be yeah we're the sheep now i'm not that furry I try not to be. Um, I, I try to, you know, shear off some of that wool every now and then. And so I'm not that furry. But I am happy to be a sheep and listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd. Because I know Jesus, the Good Shepherd, will always protect me. And when I listen to his voice, I'm going to be safe. And one of the best ways we can do that is to pray. So I'm going to ask us all to pray together. So everyone want to put their hands together and let's pray to our good shepherd. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the good shepherd. Thank you that you call us by name, that you know us, that you love us, and that you protect us. Help us to always listen to your voice and to follow your way as the true good shepherd. Amen. Amen. Thanks, kids. Good job. Well done. We're going to send the kids out with Kerry and the leaders, and we will see you all at morning tea time, kids. Thank you, Kiralee. That was a wonderful kid spot. I'm looking forward to preaching really soon from John chapter 10 about Jesus the Good Shepherd. I'm really looking forward to that. As I said, this is our Life to the Full series. We just finished a terrific six-week series uh, in the Belong series where we had lunch together each week over the six weeks, which was a real delight, a real pleasure. We're looking forward to having some more lunches soon. But we're heading into Easter and we're looking at the Gospel of John. We've been looking at John um, really over the last number of years. We've been dipping in and now we're into John chapter 10, 15 as we prepare for Easter. Our Easter services are coming soon, Good Friday and um, Good Friday and Easter Sunday. We're having Easter services at 9.30, Good Friday and Easter Sunday. And I'm really excited to let you know about something else that we're doing this um, Easter. It's a Thursday night dinner, a bit, like, uh, a bit like a Passover dinner, a bit like that dinner that Jesus had with his disciples before he went to the cross the next day. We're having a special dinner here 
in our car park, and yes, lamb will be on the menu. Won't that be lovely? And there'll be a special dinner as we prepare for Easter, as we prepare for Good Friday the next day. So that's happening on your, on your seats today as you came in. Uh, postcards. There's an invitation for you to pop in your diary, to pop on your fridge. Uh, and there's a bunch more of those invites on our Welcome Hub table at the entry at the gate uh, to the car park there. We want you to take a bunch of those and invite some friends, invite your neighbours to Easter at RPAC this year. It'll be a terrific uh, long weekend. Other things coming up. Our next mid midweek communion service, which is now fortnightly, is this Thursday, 7th of April, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. for our next midweek communion service. We follow that service by uh, having lunch together over at Club Rivers. Another special service that's coming up because we're um, also approaching um, Anzac Day later in April is an 8 a.m. Uh, Sunday service that we'll have here, uh, an Anzac commemoration service. That's something to um, also put in your diaries if you would like to um, be a part of that. Uh, this time of year is um, a special time of year for some of our neighbours and some of our community. Uh, and some of our friends, as they themselves will be celebrating Ramadan. You might know someone with a Muslim background that is uh, into that special time of year for them at the moment. I wonder if you knew that there are a bunch of Christians that uh, make the most of this opportunity in uh, Lakemba in particular of the evenings during Ramadan uh, and establish what they call a peace tent. Our very own Michelle will be attending this year and uh, a group of Christians will be there uh, talking and spreading peace, the peace that only Jesus can bring. Well, we're going to watch a video now, a little bit about that. We'd love for you to be praying for this. Hi, everyone. Course. We're on the main street of Lakemba. It's Ramadan in 2021. And uh, behind me is the peace tent. It's not the tent this year. We open it up, make it open air, just to ease people's uh, concerns about being in confined spaces. And in the tent area there, the peace tent area, we welcome people come and sit with us in peace. And we explain that we're followers of Jesus the Messiah and that one of his titles in the scriptures is the Prince of Peace. We share with them stories from the scriptures that show how Jesus has brought peace into the world. Uh, and we ask them about their lives and the ways that they uh, need peace in their lives. And we have really positive interaction with local people and not just locals but people who come from quite some distance. Lakemba is a real hub during Ramadan for Muslim people from Wollongong, Newcastle, even interstate. Many of them come in and join us, receive a little bit of hospitality from us uh, and sit in conversation so we can uh, share with them something, understand them better and by God's grace as we plant those seeds, see how he might work in their lives to bring them into his kingdom uh, and to reveal peace to them. One of the real privileges of serving in this ministry is that uh, we've got people from different churches, different backgrounds, Christians, serving together shoulder to shoulder, bringing a bit of peace uh, into Lakemba and into the lives of the people who sit down with us. It's so wonderful to be here. Uh, this year I'm, I'm living in the neighbourhood here in Lakemba uh, and I get the privilege of uh, meeting many Muslim neighbours and friends, getting to know them. So wonderful this evening. Um, some neighbours came along and it was a taste of a Christian I really love serving with the Peace Tent because it's such a unique time to get to know people in the community here, meet them where they're at, and share stories of peace with them, and really just tell them about who Jesus is, why he came, and why they need to hear his stories of peace. I had a really great conversation with a lady who came through the Peace Tent who um, grew up in a Muslim background and had kind of walked away from the faith but was searching for something. Um, so I was able to share a couple of Bible stories with her about uh, the woman who was bleeding for 12 years and um, Darius's daughter. And yeah, we just had a really great conversation about faith and about peace um, and about how Jesus can calm our anxiety. This place I believe and I pray it will be like Moses' tent. The glory of God will be upon and miracle will be inside. Sign and wonder will follow each person who enter here. Pray for this tent to be a place for encounter God 
and also place to unity for all workers to come together to share the good news with people in Australia. We're really thankful for your prayers and your support uh, for this ministry and uh, we'd love you to keep praying that the seeds of the gospel that have been sown in people's hearts will, uh, will take root and bear fruit uh, for the glory of God. What a terrific ministry, hey? And and make sure you please God. pray. So not just Michelle is involved, but others are involved, and we're incredibly thankful for that. Please be uh, praying for that terrific ministry. Chris is going to come up and lead us in prayer now, and then there'll be another song, and then the Bible will be read. Thanks, Chris. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise him, for he is my help and salvation. God, you are our helper and the sustainer of our lives. You are our strength and our shield. We trust you um, and our heart rejoices. Thank you, Father, for the Lord Jesus who died for our sins and sustains our faith in him in his sacrifice by your spirit in our hearts lord as we approach easter um, give us all a deeper understanding of your love and grace show us how this might all um, the, all the more overflow in love and good deeds in our community and now we're going to pray for that peace that was just talked about there. God of the nations whose sovereign rule brings justice and peace, have mercy on our broken and divided world. Lord, we pray especially today for Ukraine and for all the struggles that they are going through with the war with Russia. Father, we pray that you would establish peace in the hearts of all and banish from them the spirit that makes for war, that all races and peoples may learn to live as members of one family and in obedience to your laws through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Lord, we pray for good government. Um, and as we move into this season of election here in Australia, we pray, gracious Lord, grant our governments and all who serve in public life wisdom and skill, imagination and energy. And I also add honesty. Protect them from corruption and the temptation to serve themselves. And help us to commit ourselves to the common good, that our land may be secure, a secure home for all, the, all its peoples, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the Prince of Peace. Lord, we also pray for refugees around the world. We know that there are the refugees that have escaped from Ukraine and are now having a safe harbour in the countries of Europe. And also some have come to Australia. Lord, we pray for them and ask that you would be with them as they um, are often women and children and the, the husbands are elsewhere, or the brothers and the fathers back in Ukraine or, or back somewhere else trying to continue the fight for freedom. But we also pray for those uh, refugees all over the world, some of whom are in our own country, Lord, who continue to wait for freedom. Uh, they may have been here for many years, but they are not complete citizens yet. They are not made free in our country. And we ask that you would Give wisdom to government that they may look upon people
full of compassion and kindness so that they can live freely among us. And we commit them to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, we think of our own Christian family here at Riverwood and we lift up to you Dan and his family as they experience COVID and um, that we ask for special protection over the children, Lord, his little children, um, that they might not suffer greatly with this virus. Lord, we give thanks that um, our beautiful sister Lynn Perry is, Senior is with us today after her long time in hospital. Um, and we pray, Father, that she would continue to recover and grow in strength. And we pray also for her 13-year-old granddaughter, Ruby, as she struggles with health, health issues um, all around the whole COVID issue. Father, we pray for Joan Davison and ask that you would continue to give her strength, strength in her body and strength in you so that she might know your love and your presence with her every day. Lord, we lift up to you Sherry's um, goddaughter, Erin, in England. This will be a hard week for this young girl who's only 11. And we pray, Father, that you would walk with her in all that she has to do. And we may not know all about it, but Father, we entrust her to you. Um, for Jesus' sake. Lord, for those who struggle in body, mind and spirit, that they would know your presence and your healing power. Thank you for the men and women um, and children and young people of our Christian community at Riverwood Punchbowl Anglican. Help us, Father, to pray for, to care for and to love each other and so give glory to your name. And our last prayer is this one. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to serve you and others who are in the most vulnerable positions. Despite the realities surrounding us being bitter, help us to continue working towards eternal benefits, our eternal benefits. Continue to lead and guide us for the expansion of your kingdom and help us to bring comfort and hope and show your everlasting love to those defeated in spirit. Thank you, because we believe you hear us when we ask. Amen. Son Jesus, um, can be the uh, foundation of our um, very being. Uh, this one's about to face the stands and sing the cornerstone with us. i 
Bible now. Grab your Bibles or your YouTube, yeah, your YouVersion apps. Or <laughs> your YouTube apps. That'll be on YouTube later. You'll be able to listen to the Bible reading later on YouTube, but now. Grab your YouVersion app or your Bible. It is a, a real blessing to have God's Word and to be able to follow along. Yes, we do put it on the screen to make it easier. But nothing beats having the Word of God on your lap, either on the phone or in the good book itself. Uh, we have copies of the good book in the foyer for you to pick up on your way through. Um, it's good to have it in front of you as the preacher speaks from it, so that you can check what he says is true. It's what's in the Word. Always good to make sure the preacher is saying what is in the Word and not something different, not something else. Thanks so much, Chris, for your prayers. Yes, I know the Gale family will value your prayers at the moment in COVID isolation. So please be praying for them. And it is wonderful to be seeing Lynn back with us. And we're thankful that God fans have proved there. Please keep her in your prayers also. Let me read from John chapter 10, verses 1 to 21. John chapter 10, verses 1 to 21. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognise a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. The Jews who heard these words were again divided. Many of them said, he is demon possessed and raving mad. Why listen to him? But others said, these are not the sayings of a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open up the eyes of the blind? Let me pray. Dear God and Father, we do want to thank you for the privilege of your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who guides us and helps us and counsels us. Open our hearts and minds this morning to know what it is that we need to know. To change and shape our hearts back to you, Father God. To truly see Jesus as our gate and as our good shepherd. We pray this in his mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let me start by asking you these questions this morning. Can you ever truly know someone? Can you ever truly have certainty about anything? What if we can't? What are the implications? Can you ever truly know someone? Can you ever truly have certainty about anything? What if we can't? What are the implications? Because if we can't truly know someone, then what's that going to mean? What will that mean for trust? What will that mean for hope in the relationship? What will that mean for trust and hope in that relationship? If we can't have certainty about anything, 
then we might end up saying that life is truly hopeless. If there is no certainty, then where is the hope? Now, with all that is going on in our world today, many are asking, aren't they? Rightly asking, where's the certainty? Or they're saying everything just seems hopeless. But listen to the amazing news of the gospel. You can truly know someone and be truly known. You can have certainty for this life and into the next. And this is only, only because of the person and work of Jesus Christ that we just read about this morning. Because of Jesus, the Bible tells us that we can have certainty. Because of Jesus, the Bible tells us we can have hope. Now, it's all about knowing Jesus. You know, this morning, I want to talk about three things, three things that we need to know. Three things that we need to know about Jesus. The first is this, to know his voice. Have a look at verses 1 to 6 with me. Before we dig into verses 1 to 6, let's have a bit of a recap on John's Gospel because it has been just over a year or so since we were in the, uh, in the Gospel. And if you weren't around with us then, what is this Gospel all about? Who is it written by? Well, it's written by the man that is named after, and this is the Apostle John. He was one of the 12 disciples. He was a close friend of Jesus. In fact, he's described in the Gospels as the beloved disciple. He was a close friend of Jesus, John, the Apostle. And so what we have here as we read these words from John's Gospel is a first-hand account of the person and work of Jesus um, by someone who was beside him for his whole adult ministry. This is a first-hand account written down for us that we are reading and exploring today and over the next um, eight weeks. John tells us why he went to the trouble of writing a gospel. In John 20, verse 30 to 31, it says this, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. For John, the recording of his gospel was that people might come to know Jesus and might have life. Life in Jesus' name. He reveals early on in his gospel the significance of it when he opens up in chapter 1 uh, with these words. The word became flesh. He's talking about Jesus and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father full of grace and truth. The Word was God, we're told. The Word was with God. The Word, God, became flesh. That's the significance of this Gospel. John will account, will describe the Son of God, God in the flesh, and his ministry. John, the Apostle, lived to a ripe old age. He um, lived a lot longer than many of the other disciples, many of the other possible, uh, Apostles. He was the last of the evangelists to write his gospel. He wrote from the city of Ephesus with really a diverse audience in mind. He wrote at a time um, of the early Christian mission to the Gentiles where um, Gnostic thought was widespread. That is the thought that knowledge and wisdom through spiritual, spirituality would save you. That was the thought of the time. So that's why we read much of what we read in John that will counter that. John wrote his, his, his gospel after a significant time for the Jews. It was after the destruction of their temple in Jerusalem in AD 70. And so what John also does in his gospel, he presents Jesus as the temple's replacement. And that's why he says that Jesus tabernacled amongst us. And so John wants us to believe that Jesus is the Christ that he is the Son of God, and that by believing that we will have life eternal in his name. And now here we are in John chapter 10, in a section that follows Jesus just healing a blind man. And at the end of the passage in chapter 9, he is getting stuck into the Pharisees, some of the religious uh, elites, the religious rulers, elders of the day. Now our passage this morning continues this rebuke from Jesus to the Pharisees, and at the same time, Jesus shares fundamental truths 
unpacks further why he came and the gospel. And it really is such an incredible passage because this is the gospel. Here's how we know Jesus. Have a look at verse 1 with me. I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. Who are the thieves and robbers? Jesus says it's the false prophets of the past. It's the false prophets of the present. It's the Pharisees and other religious hypocrites. Who is the true shepherd? Jesus. How do we know that? Jesus knows his sheep by name and his sheep know and hear his voice. And because he is the true shepherd, they follow him. The Pharisees were fake shepherds. When Jesus is talking about them as fake shepherds, he's thinking back, back to the Old Testament where prophets like Ezekiel would blast other false prophets and, and fake shepherds of um, God's people, God's people Israel. Have a, have a look at Ezekiel 34, 1-6. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Woe to you, shepherds of Israel, who only take care of yourselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the curds, clothe yourselves with the wool, and slaughter the choice animals. But you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak, or healed the sick, or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays, or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And when they were scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. My sheep wandered all over the mountains and on every high hill. They were scattered over the whole earth, and no one or searched or looked for them. The false prophets of Israel time, Jesus is comparing them to the Pharisees now, and ultimately he compares the fake shepherd to a true shepherd. He contrasts the bad shepherds with a true shepherd. God and Jesus are our true shepherds. Listen to this psalm. You know it well. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. This is the true shepherd. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David is describing the true shepherd. He shall not be in one. Takes care of him. Even though he walks through the valley of the shadow of death, he fears no evil because he follows the true shepherd. Because true shepherds provide, and God and Jesus have done that for their people. And Jesus is reminding people here again who he is as the true shepherd. God's always been on the forefront of making himself known. He is not hidden. He has not retreated. He has given humanity all they need to hear him, to hear his voice. We should, we can hear the voice of the true shepherd. Here's the problem. We've chosen to listen to other voices, mostly our own. The voice that says, I want to do it my, my way. I'm okay on my own. Get lost, God. That voice and other voices. Jesus says, I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, and we're to listen to his voice. Knowing Jesus is knowing his voice. Secondly, it's knowing the gate. In verses 7 to 10. If I use words like the abundant life, living the abundant life, Living your best life now, what does that make me think of? If I asked you to say, what does the abundant life look like for you? What would you say, just to yourself, you don't have to call it out, just to yourself, what does the abundant life mean for you? Have a think about that, because I want us to have a think about what Jesus has to say about the abundant life. 
in verse 6, we know uh, that the Pharisees and some others um, that were with him didn't understand what he was saying. So Jesus goes on to make things abundantly clear. In verse 7 to 9, he says, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. Now, when Jesus says that he is the gate, he is making it abundantly clear that he is the only way to God, which means he is saying that he is the only way to salvation. As we read on in John uh, chapters 10 to 15 over this series, we'll come to John 14, and Jesus will say to this, he'll say to his disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, hear the great distinction of the Christian gospel, because it can cause many to be offended. This truth, this distinction that came from the mouth of Jesus himself, here in John 10, in John 14, and in other places, that Jesus is the only way to a right relationship with God. That's what Jesus, the Son of God, God in the flesh, the Word who became flesh, who came down, whose words are recorded by one of his best friends, this is what he recorded him saying. That he is the only way to a right relationship with God. Jesus is not saying that there are many ways. Jesus is not saying that there are many religions that will get you there. He is not saying we are all on different paths and it doesn't matter what path you're all on, we'll get there in the end. No, he's not saying that. He is saying that he is the only way. I count it a great privilege um, every Anzac Day when I get invited to speak at the dawn service across the road for Club Rivers um, on the street. I count it a privilege because um, I get to speak from the Bible, I get to share the gospel at uh, what is a, um, a very deep and uh, solemn time um, for our, our nation and other nations on Anzac Day. And it's a wonderful privilege, really, for me to be able to speak as a Christian uh, pastor to um, several hundred people um, that may not otherwise hear the words of the Bible or hear the gospel. Many, many years ago, um, after one of those dawn services, the following week, week I, I received a letter in the mail. Just say, no, I don't get much fan mail. I don't normally get much fan mail at all, actually. Uh, but there was a letter. It wasn't really categorised as fan mail. Actually, it was a lady who described herself as a local Christian and uh, how um, she took offence uh, to the message and that as a Christian, she felt that the message wasn't um, showing a real tolerance for everyone and, and that we, we were, we were a, a, a country now of many different beliefs of many different cultures and really, um, it was really quite unhelpful for me to talk about Jesus in the way um, that I did. But do we as Christians, do we really care for people and cultures by not sharing the truth? Or do I care for people and cultures by sharing the truth as lovingly and as kindly as I can? And helpfully and appropriately, yes. Verse 10, Jesus says, I have come. Jesus spoke truth. He spoke it plainly. He spoke it clearly. The result of the Son of God laying his down in his life for the sheep is this. Verse 10. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So life to the full. What is the abundant life? When, when you thought about to you, what is, what is the best, your best life now? Um, what did you think of when I asked just a minute ago? Um, is it the nice home? Was it the nice family or the nice things? Is the abundant life to you the nice husband or the nice wife or the nice girlfriend or the nice boyfriend? Is the abundant life to you a good job or good super or good investments? What is your best life now? Because Jesus is saying something different. He says that the abundant life is knowing that this life and the next are saved through the work of Jesus Christ and that's what matters. That's what counts in the end. Because you and I share in the abundant life now, knowing that we have full assurance of forgiveness of sins now and into eternity. Our abundant life finds its culmination not in things now or stuff now or relationships now or money now or investments now or a good job or a good 
partner, what is, doesn't find its culmination in that. Our abundant life finds its culmination in heaven, in God's presence and with the angels. So life might suck right now, but you have life to the full if you have Jesus. Through the sickness, through the depression, through the unknown, through the loss, through the grief, through the highs and lows of life, Yours is the abundant life if it's the life that entrusts itself to Jesus Christ. That's the abundant life. You don't need more. You have it all when you have life in Jesus. So keep going. Keep looking to your true home. Keep trusting Jesus. Know his voice. Know the game. Thirdly, know the good shepherd. A look at verses 11 to 18. What does it mean to be known? What does it mean to be known? There might be times when we feel, when we feel it's better not to be known. There might be times in our lives where we just would rather not be known. Then there are times when we know the joy of being known. You may miss being known. It's possible that when we're younger, we wish we were more known. When we're older, we miss those who once knew us. Jesus says he knows us. Like no one else can. Like no one else possibly could. When Jesus says, I know my sheep and my sheep know me, he is saying something extraordinary and something incredible. We are known by the Good Shepherd. Each of us known by name. We are gathered, we are cared for, we are provided for by the amazing Good Shepherd. Jesus says the sheep of Israel are, jo are joined by other sheep because you see the message of Jesus has gone out to the Gentiles, it's gone out to all nations. People like you and me, you know, we sit here today because the message of life through the Good Shepherd went out through the apostles originally and across the world and it came to us through the generations. We are known by the one who laid down his life willingly only to take it up again after three days. Jesus dispels the myth that he was bullied in going to the cross. He was always a part of the triune divine plan. He willingly, obediently went to the cross for sinful humanity. You and I are reconciled and redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Let me finish by talking about the great benefits of knowing Jesus. I asked those four questions right at the start. Can you ever truly know someone? Can you ever truly have certainty about anything? What if we can't? What are the implications? Here's my answer to the first question. Can you ever truly know someone Jesus says yes. We can truly know him. More than that, we are truly known. You might want to be known. You might miss being known. Know that you are known by the God who saved you, your brother and saviour who laid down his life for you, and the Holy Spirit who walks with you every day. No one will ever know you better than that. The second question, can you ever truly have certainty about anything? Jesus says yes. He says you can be certain that he is the gate and that he is the shepherd. You can be certain that he is your only way to God. How can we be certain? Because he lived it, he preached it, he showed it, he made it possible, he made the way through his death and his resurrection. We'll celebrate that at Easter. Jesus making it certain, the empty tomb. Every Easter, we're reminded of the certainty, you see, of the work of the cross by the empty tomb. The third question, what if we can't? Jesus says you can. By submitting your life to the Good Shepherd today, that's all we need to do. To say sorry to Jesus if you look for certainty in other places. If you've tried to replace Jesus with other things, say sorry 
Walk through the gate that is Jesus himself. Sit with the good shepherd. Question four, what are the implications? There are two. A life lived with Jesus as your good shepherd is an eternity with him. A life trusting the good shepherd is an eternity with him. That's a choice that we have, securing the good shepherd. The second choice is a life lived without Jesus as our good shepherd. That's an eternity without the good shepherd. We choose the good shepherd, we choose life. We ignore the good shepherd, we ignore an eternity with him. You choose. Let me encourage you to choose life. Choose the good shepherd. I'm going to pray a prayer now. If you would like to choose the good shepherd today, if you would like to know this abundant life that only Jesus can bring, I encourage you to pray it with me. It's going to come up on the screen. I'm going to pray it slowly so that you can pray it quietly in your own mind. And we'll say together at the end, Amen. Here's the prayer. Jesus, I'm sorry for looking for certainty in the wrong places. Forgive me and heal me. I want you to be my good shepherd. Thank you for showing me the way to God. Thank you for saving me. I want to follow you for the rest of my days. Amen. Amen. I'd love to know if you prayed that prayer for the first time. Because like all of us, you're going to need help. The sheep need help. The sheep need help, most certainly from the, the true shepherd, the good shepherd. But the sheep need help from each other too. Please let me know if you prayed that prayer. We're going to sing again. Let's sing. Certainty in Jesus. Um, I think the song encapsulates that quite well, um, quite eloquently. Um, it's a very familiar tune. It's an uh, old Lang Syne, the New Year's, uh, New Year's song. Uh, just put to more scripture based words. Um, I think we've done it a couple of times. Uh, but yeah. Um, yeah, please stand and sing.
Shepherd, come and join us for morning tea outside. Let's go have some morning tea. Thank you.